right, the T-Mobile quarter, it was huge. They hit on so many metrics. Things are looking really, really good there. So let me give you guys the numbers, and then, of course, we can kind of break them down and compare them to their competitors. I think that's a fair thing to do because now we've got all three reporting. All right, postpaid net account additions, 315,000. Nobody else reports it, so we can't compare anything. Postpaid net customer additions of 1.6 million. Postpaid phone net customer additions, 865,000. So that we can compare, right? So Verizon came in at 239,000. AT&T came in at 429,000. And T-Mobile at 865,000. Postpaid phone churn came in at 0 0.86. That puts them in second place. Uh, seven or eight basis points behind uh AT&T and a few marks ahead of Verizon. So when I was speculating yesterday that I think that Verizon was going to finish last, it was because I don't think the dot nine is going to happen much anymore, right? A dot nine is probably only going to happen when there's some serious price action happening, right? So that's why I thought with Verizon being at dot eight nine, I thought T-Mobile would just come in just slightly lower. Like I predicted, I think like dot eight five or something. So like right where I kind of predicted, that's really what I expected. Uh, high speed internet, home broadband, 415,000 fixed wireless. Uh, Verizon had, I believe 380,000. So the, so they're pretty close that these, these numbers between Verizon and T-Mobile are very consistent. This is typically what they do. So they're both hitting in that respect. Service revenues grew 5% year over year, 16.7 billion. Postpaid service revenues at 13.3 billion, that grew. Net income at 3.1 billion, that grew. Uh, the diluted EPS, $2.61, grew 43%. Adjusted EBITDA, 8.2 billion, that grew 9%. Net cash from operations, that was a record high. Adjusted free cash flow at 5.2 billion. Um, so I think we got to call it out. It's official. T-Mobile generates more free cash flow than AT&T. AT&T generated $5.1 billion in free cash flow. T-Mobile generated $5.2 billion. And I know not everybody's going to like to hear this, but it's the truth. There is a version of the T-Mobile company where they will generate more free cash flow than Verizon. This can happen. They're at $5.2 billion today. There are steps that T-Mobile can take and probably will take that will get them to six billion in a Q3. Probably the next Q3, they will be at six billion. So if Verizon doesn't raise its free cash flow, there is a there is a situation where T-Mobile can generate more free cash flow than Verizon. That's possible. I'm not saying it's going to happen for sure. I'm not going to say that it's a done deal. I'm saying they are within striking distance. <laughs> Five point two billion and six billion is not that far, <laughs> considering this company has things that they're probably going to do that's going to push that issue. Hey man, if the customers are okay with it, then so be it. But right now they're still giving away free lines. If they stop that, you're right. Maybe they maybe people will stay and maybe people will pay. But you have spoken at nauseum about the T Mobile customer, the legacy T Mobile customer. And if they start pulling those levers, then Maybe they leave. Maybe they that's, go. That's possible. And I would expect a churn rate spike, and I would expect it to impact the bottom line, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the new T-Mobile customer and the legacy T-Mobile customer could not be more different. Very different. Good point. Yes, that's the true. New, the legacy customer isn't making them any money. The new customer is really what brought them to that spot, having 5.2 in free cash flow. I agree. And so if they if it's an easy level to pull, then why haven't they pulled it yet, Sneed? Because because they know what I they know they know what we know. Yeah. yeah, I think they know. Okay, so if that's the case, then maybe that you know scenario that you're talking about isn't as likely as maybe you think it is. Because if it was, they would have done it by now. They can't wait to say yeah, best in about industry about on everything. Need <laughs> right? They think do about look it. Look at it. It's like but the, think about this. Years. Think about it this way: the first quarter they generated free cash flow, it was like one point two billion. The second quarter they did it, it was like 3.2 billion. 
right? And then now it's it's at 5.2 billion. Like we're seeing a trend of acceleration in free cash flow. I can't overlook that. I have to acknowledge that there is a possibility of them getting to 6 billion in free cash flow. Well, I mean, when that's what every got free cash flow. When was that first quarter? That was 1.2 a couple years ago. Every company increases cash flow as it goes through the year. That's an industry trend. So, I mean, every carry does that. So, yes, they are now operating like a company that wants to earn money, and that's a good thing for them. All that I'm saying is in order for them to get to surpassing or get to or surpass Verizon, they have to up that even more, which means the free lines have to stop. You can't give away, sir, especially not in this industry where it costs a lot of money to build and maintain a network, which they still haven't really fully embraced the responsibility for doing because there's still an eight or nine billion dollars in capex. So it's neat. Like if you're going to increase the spend and you're going to call and you may have the, the okay, if they well, get past the six, they're, bits, not, if, they're not increasing they, the spend. Well, I mean, what, but they're going to, the but they're going to, but it's like eight or nine billion is what they said. And right. they're going to have to increase that. They got no choice. So if their if their we're revenue goes up, billion consistently for the next two years at least. Okay. So if that's the case, and their network can support it, then how are they going to build out millimeter wave, which we just talked about first in this particular I don't you know, session? Gonna, I don't think they're going to build out millimeter wave in the next. Well, you couple can't years. if you're going to stay at eight or nine billion. Like everybody likes to talk about Candyland fantasies, and that's great. But you still got to do the stuff. Like you still got to build it out. So yeah, they got free cash flow, and they've they've managed to surpass AT and T, and that's great. Right now, AT and T is giving away a lot of stuff in order to you know stop the bleeding that would come if they had to rely just on that network asset. So I, I mean, I, I get what you're saying, Steve, and I certainly respect it. But it's a whole lot of ifs, man, and it's it's a whole lot of ifs that I don't I don't know that they're going to be able to do that. If you if you stop the free stuff, that means you're going to have to give up an even better network experience. You and I both know they don't have the coverage that a Verizon or an AT and T does, and so if they don't have that, then they means they got to go build it. They don't have the capacity that Verizon does. They don't have millimeter wave out there, so they got to go build that. They don't have the fiber, so they got to go build that. How is all that building going to happen? And they're going to still manage to flow money down to the bottom line, which is free cash flow. How is that going to happen, Sneed? So I'm oh, noticing sh- a recurring theme here, right? Um, T-Mobile, they always have every quarter a million net ads, blah, blah, blah. Like, when is this <laughs> going to catch? <laughs> when is this going to catch up to their capex? Like, the two don't compute together. Why spend eight or nine billion in capex when you're gaining? A million plus customers every freaking quarter. 